Hi, it's Sean, the Fluency Awesomeizer, and this is the Coding Multisyllabic Words, episode 37. I have three words I want to take a look at today. Let's get started. I want you to read these words right out loud. What's this first word? How about this? And this. What if you look then this way? All right, were any of those words tricky for you to read? If so, I want you to keep watching. I'm gonna show you some decoding strategies you can use when you're stuck on words like this. But first, a reminder of the tortoise and the hare fable. And the moral slow and steady wins the race, which is great advice when you're stuck trying to read a big unfamiliar word like this one. You can think of these words as races. There is a finish line, the end of the word. And if you read like the hare, you want to get finished quickly. You might zip through a big word like this. That's where mistakes can easily happen. But if you read like the tortoise and you take it slow and steady, that patience is really going to help improve your decoding and your ability to read these big words. So let's practice some strategies on this, starting with this first one. I can see the word pair in the middle of this word. If I take my fingers out, break this word apart. Uh, that is an R controlled sound, air. Right, it's all around you, pair. That's paired. Is it paired? No, it's paired. You don't hear the E there. That's spared. Starts with des, spared. Yeah, this is the word despaired. And it comes from the root despair. That word is not a positive word, all right? Despair, that is a bad feeling, which makes it an abstract noun. And it's also a verb to despair, to feel despair. So you can put an ed on the end to get the past tense verb, despaired. It's not despair red. That ed can make it look like it says red at the end of this word. Uh, there are three rules to ed endings. And this is one of those rules. You only hear the d sometimes. It depends on the word, but this is despaired. You just hear an extra d sound, despaired. This word, really big word. So if you're stuck on it, break it apart. It starts with dis. I can see sap. There's the word appear in the middle of this word. And that's another R controlled sound there. That, that R is a pretty tricky letter. I hope, I hope it didn't fool you with this word, but that's ear. And the thing about E-A-R has two sounds because that's the word pair. Sounds like air that, that is all around you, but that is appear, put it E-D. Yeah, this is the word disappeared. Really big words, easy to confuse. Uh, so let's look at it. Starts with the root appear, which is a verb, but an ed on the end, you've got the past tense verb appeared, not appear read. This is another case where you just hear an extra d sound. That ed just makes a d sound, appeared. Prefix dis, and you've got the word disappeared. All right, the last word we were going to look at is this one, breaking it apart. I can see um, this is another word that starts with dis. There's per, another R-controlled sound. Not pr, but per. And said, it looks like said in the, at the end maybe, but that's purse. And this is the word dispersed. It comes from the root disperse, which is a verb also. To disperse means if you're in a, in a crowd, uh, everyone goes back to where they were and the crowd disperses. So disperse, you put, just have to put a D on the end. The E is already there to make the past tense verb dispersed. Now it's not dispersed said, it looks like it could have said at the end. You don't hear the E again, but if you listen to it dispersed, here's another ED rule. This time it sounds like a T, dispersed. And that happens a lot. And for all you spellers out there, if a word ends with T, think, Think twice, is this a verb that has an ED ending? Could be that the reason why there's a T sound, dispersed. So that's an ED rule. Dispersed is our third word. All right, to finish up here, I want you to get ready to read. I have a phrase I've written, I'm about to show it to you. I want you to read it right out loud. You're gonna practice some of the decoding strategies that we just reviewed, all right? So press pause and read this right out loud, go. All right, that's it for today's video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook for lots more helpful videos like this. And if you go to my Facebook page and my photos, there's an album full of reading challenges I've written to help you practice decoding and awesomeize your fluency.
And all you have to do to get there is search the Fluency Awesomeizer. Awesomeizer, look at it. It's an interesting word, awesomeizer. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Come back and see me soon. Bye.